Hello people, this is Johnny again and this time starting with the live drum mixing tutorial that I had planned for a pretty long time now. Finally I'm getting to do it. Um, in this first video I don't really want to start on anything that's about mixing. I just want to get our mindset for this whole tutorial because there are some things you perhaps should keep in mind for the whole further thing. So, first of all, I'm going to show this tutorial on the song anti Vaunt from the band Groove Venom. Uh, it's off their album Viper, which I had the pleasure to mix and master earlier this year. And you'll find the download link in the description. Now, if you happen to compare the sound that I mixed there to the drum mix that I will be building in this tutorial, you may notice it doesn't really sound alike. And well, it's only natural because for this tutorial I will build the mix from scratch and perhaps with some new approaches, so naturally it's gonna sound different and perhaps even better. Next thing you should keep in mind is this will not be so much of a beginner's tutorial. It's gonna be a bit more advanced. So for this one I will assume that you have a basic understanding of mixing and how to use equalizer and how to use a compressor and how to use it all on the drums and whatnot. If you feel like you don't really have a substantial basis of all of that yet, I suggest you take a look at all the other tutorials I made. You'll find them in my tutorial playlist on my channel. So I'm sure there's stuff that will kind of help you out. If not, I'm sorry. Also, I will be mostly using plugins from the Waves Gold Bundle. But don't let that distract you, okay? What's important is that you understand the principles behind everything and that you don't just take everything I show there for a set rule that you definitely have to copy exactly as I do it on your drum mix. It, that won't make any sense and it won't help you because, well, you might have different drums recorded in a different room, recorded with different mics, so using the exact same procedures that I do uh, won't make any sense, really. So just try to understand the ideas I want to show you and the principles behind it all and then apply it all to whatever you have at your disposal, you know, your recordings and your plugins and whatnot. That's the thing with music production, okay? There are no rules, there are only principles. And depending on how you apply them, you either get a good mix or a bad mix. Now let's talk about the live drums themselves. There are some pretty obvious differences between live drums and BST drums. Um, one major thing would be the bleeding. So, take for example a BST drum, you know? and then just solo the kick drum. What do you think you will hear? Well, only the kick drum. Hmm. Okay, that's all nice and cool and, you know, not really hard to mix and whatnot. Now, let's take a look at live drums and solo the kick drum. What do you think you will hear? Well, for one, of course, the kick drum, really loud and punchy. But because of the bleeding into the kick mic, you will also hear the whole rest of the drum kits. You know, really rather quietly though in the background, but still it's there. And when you want to approach a really heavy, punchy, straightforward and edgy metal drum mix, then the bleed is not really your friend. For a more pop rockish mix, um, you rather want to work with the bleed a little bit to have a more natural, open and let's say rougher sound, I guess you could say. But for a tight metal mix, we gonna have to work our way around it. At least that's my procedure, you know. As always, I, I will show my ideas and my procedures in this whole tutorial. So take everything I say with a bit of a grain of salt. 
anyway. Another thing is, with a lot of bands, you'll find they simply don't have the budget to record in a big studio with a big, nice sounding live room for the drums. So what they often do is they just record in a small studio without a mic, uh, without room mic. What am I saying? Room mic. I'm talking about room mic. So they don't have the budget to, you know, missing room mic. That's the point. So we're going to have to compensate for that either. And don't think the room mic is trivial because it really helps to round off the whole drum mix and give it a bit more life and a bit more character and fatten it up a little bit <laughs> and uh, just using parallel reverb on the drums is not what I'm getting at. I'm, you'll see what I'll do when we hit it off into the tutorial. So is there anything else we need to set our minds on? Ah, yeah. um, <laughs> since this is a live drum tutorial, I will not use any re-triggering procedures. So no sample reinforcement or pure sample replacement, that's not gonna happen. Okay, it would be kind of missing the purpose of a live drum mixing tutorial if I started to just replace everything with samples. Also, with live drums, I personally think working with the recordings, the original raw recordings, to the best as you can is much better than just throwing samples in there. It has a much more human aspect to it and just a more natural aspect to it. Because take for example again the kick drum. You know, no drummer uh, is so robotic that each kick drum has the same force behind its hit. So with live drums you always have pretty big dynamics. Or, well, depending on the skill of the drummer, of course. Also about sample replacement. Well, the reason I don't like it, just imagine, you know, you, you take one kick sample and then you re-trigger the whole kick track with that one sample. Then every kick drum hit will sound identical. And that sounds very robotic and sterile and boring and... I don't like it. I just plain don't like when people do that. There's only one procedure that I would ever consider actually using if I actually had the means to. I, I don't even have a retriggering plugin or software. Um, the one thing you can do is you just take one kick drum sample out of your original kick drum track. You know, one hit that sounds very nicely balanced, not too hard punching through, not too soft. And you save that little sample as an audio file for its own. And then you can re-trigger the whole kick drum track with that one sample. So you're actually using the same kick sound to re-trigger the kick. But I would not totally replace the whole kick track with that one sample, because again, it would sound robotic. I would only... Um, how do you call it? Reinforce it? Ah, uh, it's not the word I'm looking for. Uh, well, you know what I mean. Just have the original kick drum track and then a bit of this re-triggered drum track just to enhance it a bit more. That is something that I would probably do. Be that as it may, uh, I hope I wasn't ranting too much now. And I hope we have our minds set now for the actual tutorial. And then see you in the next part where we will hit it off.